Hello and welcome to New Central Television. The top stories at this hour. World Court says Israel must take steps to, present, uh, to prevent acts of uh, genocide in Gaza. As South Africa describes ruling as decisive victory. Court sentences popular Lagos pastor for e. Daniels to life imprisonment for rape. And Kenyan government to challenge court ruling against Haiti deployment. Details in a moment. The world, this is NC Continental Prime. I am Dakbo Adigboyi. We begin the news at this hour with uh, the top United Nations court saying Israel should do everything it could to prevent any act of genocide in the Gaza Strip in a highly anticipated ruling. Now, the International Court of Justice on Friday said Israel must do everything to prevent the commission of all acts within the scope of the Genocide Convention. Earlier, Gazans expressed lack of conviction in the ruling as they say Israel will not abide by the decision. Despite International Court of Justice ruling, which orders Israel to halt its military campaign launched in retaliation for Hamas' unprecedented attacks on October 7th, it has little power to enforce its rulings. The State of Israel shall take all measures within its power to prevent and punish the direct and public incitement to commit genocide in relation to members of the Palestinian group in the Gaza Strip. 16 votes to 1. The State of Israel shall take immediate and effective measures to ensure the provision of urgently needed basic services and humanitarian assistance to address the adverse conditions of life faced by Palestinians in the Gaza Strip. In the meantime, South Africa has held a ruling by the ICJ that Israel should prevent any acts of genocide in Gaza. But President Cyril Ramaphosa is saying he hopes it would lead to a ceasefire. South Africa's Ministry of Foreign Affairs also welcomed the ruling as a decisive victory for the international rule of law and a significant milestone in the search for justice for the Palestinian people. We expect Israel as a self-proclaimed democracy and a state that respects the rule of law to abide by the measures handed down by the International Court of Justice. After more than half a century of occupation, dispossession, oppression, and apartheid, the Palestinian people's cries for justice have been heeded by an eminent organ of the United Nations. Today, Israel stands before the international community, its crimes against the Palestinians laid bare. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu slammed the South African genocide case as outrageous after the UN court Gaza's ruling. Now, South Africa had brought the case before Israel, accusing it of breaching the 1948 United Nations Genocide Convention set up in the ashes of the World War II and the Holocaust. Now, President Cyril Ramaphosa and the Council of South Africa's governing party erupted in chairs after the ruling, which the foreign ministry held as a decisive victory. However, Netanyahu had already suggested he does not feel bound by the court, saying no one will stop Israel. Israel's commitment to international law is unwavering, equally unwavering, is our sacred commitment to continue to defend our country and defend our people. Like every country, Israel has an inherent right to defend itself. The vile attempt to deny Israel this fundamental right is blatant discrimination against the Jewish state, and it was justly rejected. The charge of genocide leveled against Israel is not only false, it's outrageous, and decent people everywhere should reject it. Earlier, William Els, a senior training coordinator in NAC program Institute for Security Studies, Pretoria, joined us for more on this. There have been implications for that. Remember, the world is, is, is quite divided 
uh, uh, by this case, you've got the people pro-Israel, and then also you've got the other lobbying uh, countries and groups uh, that support South Africa in this venture. So, uh, so that's quite uh, quite a dividing uh, uh, case that uh, that has been brought uh, to the to the international court. Uh, but what we see there there are different uh, uh, things that have been achieved. Uh, firstly, uh, you know, the court had to decide whether they got the jurisdiction to hear the case. And we see that the court actually decided that it did have, and therefore they went uh, ahead with the interim ruling. Uh, did South Africa achieve everything that it wanted to? Uh, and not, uh, not so. Uh, one of uh, the things that the court actually did not uh, uh, go ahead to is to order uh, Israel to immediately uh, stop uh, and suspend uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 actions and also a permanent ceasefire that they they requested to be to be uh, uh, to the sort from the court. A private jet having about 10 persons on board has overshot the Badon Airport runway in the Oyo State capital. The jet, we understand, was carrying very important personalities. According to sources, the incident happened on Friday around 11 a.m. local time at the Samuel Ladoke Akintola Airport. The jet missed the runway and skidded into a nearby bush. Now, firefighters and rescue officials from the Federal Airport Authority of Nigeria we immediately deployed to the scene. However, there was no death or casualty recorded. Spokesperson for the Nigerian Aviation Authority, Karo Adeku Tuju, uh, said it was a private jet from Abuja. It landed safely, but overshot the runway, adding that there was no casualty. The Lagos state government on Sunday announced a ban on the usage and distribution of styrofoam and other single-use plastics in the state with immediate effect. A statement signed by the Commissioner for the Environment and Water Resources, Tokumba Wahab, said the decision was uh, reached following the menace uh, that single-use plastics, especially non-biodegradable styrofoam, was causing on the environment. Now, New Central's Bettina Mweli tells us more. The government's recent move to impose a ban on the use of styrofoam is generating reactions, highlighting the complexities of environmental regulations in metropolitan regions. I don't feel happy at all. I feel bad because there are some people that it, that is only what they sell. If they stop it, how are they going to make their livelihood living? It's very, very okay because it's costing a lot of dirty around. People don't keep them. As soon as they use them, they don't dispose them properly. Me, personally, I'm not feel happy. Actually, if we stop it, where are we going to start? Because some of us, that is where we eat, join our family. So government or uh, states, whatever, they will know what to do to stop people that are using it along the road to say. Styrofoam, also recognized as expanded polystyrene, has served as a widely used packaging material for many years, owing to its lightweight and effective insulation properties. Foamed polystyrene is made into insulation, packaging, and food containers such as beverage cups, egg cartons, and disposable plates and trays. It con contains uh, some chemicals that are carcinogenic, and these can you know, cause cancer and other health associated um, risks. When it comes to styrofoam, it is long overdue for the ban. Over the last few decades, there have been multiple debates about whether plastic foam, also known as polystyrene, is biodegradable or not. From start to finish, plastic foam production relies on harsh chemicals. Now that you know the styrofoam has been banned, so you're, you're going to think outside the box, box invest in your R&D research and, and also help um, bring, bring um, innovative solutions, innovative and sustainable packaging material. So we also have, you know, as part of alternatives, you don't want to eat in or bring your own place, you can also um, purchase um, their bamboo, bamboo um, products that are made from um, bamboo material, really. So you can 
also use bamboo plates you can use your stainless plates you know so there are actually many even um, paper plates there are some paper plates that are actually very biodegradable and um, eco-friendly so you can also use that as an alternative to using styrofoam while the jury may be out for an exact amount of time the unsettling truth is that polystyrene does not decompose it's not a question about how long it takes but rather about understanding just how dangerous the cycle of plastic foam is. In Lagos for New Central, Bettina Nwili. A Lagos Sexual and Domestic Violence Court has sentenced the founder of Irene Christian Ministry to life imprisonment on Friday for raping a church member. Founder Faye Daniels was found guilty of rape and sexual assault by Judge Rahman Oshodi for crimes committed against a female worshipper at the Lagos-based ministry. More in Niyomani's report. The Lagos state government arraigned Bishop Oluwafi Rockwood Daniel before the Sexual Offence Court on a full cans charge of rape contrary to Section 260, Subsection 2 of the Criminal Law of Lagos State 2015. The state claimed that the defendant, the founder of Irene Christian Ministry, allegedly committed the offences sometime in June 2020 at Ikota Villa Estate, Lekki, Lagos. Whether you freeze my account or you pay bloggers to speak against me or to write in newspaper, the Council of Jehovah will stand. The court found Bishop Daniel guilty and sentenced him to life imprisonment on the first count of rape and three years imprisonment on the third count. The court found him guilty of the fourth count charge against the first complainant, they uh, found him guilty of rape. That carried a life sentence. But the court, um, in its wisdom, said that the prosecution did not establish enough evidence in the second count of rape against the second complainant. But the court also, um, further went to find him guilty of sexual assault against the third complainant, but did not find him guilty of attempted rape. We want to say thank you to Lagos State Government for saying no and zero tolerance to any form of gender-based violence. Today is landmark. This is a victory we didn't see coming. We knew we were going to have victory, but we didn't know it was going to be like this. This sentencing comes at a time when more church leaders and pastors are being accused of sexual abuse. It has also told survivors who have been brutalized who have been, um, um, you know, have one way or the other um, been victimized and traumatized by men of the cloth, that they have a voice and that they, when they talk, will listen. Justice has been served and uh, this is uh, giving us uh, uh, joy that we can still rely on the justice system of Nigeria. In my own case, and I think that is the only regret I will be having in my life, that I didn't take TB Joshua to court because I was not well guided. Um, as a man, I'm ashamed that um, we still have men who feel they can rape women, they can sexually assault women, and nothing will happen. You go, because you see, if you know that the lady you are about to mess up with, if you know this will happen to you, you won't dare. Sexual rights activists believe the position of trust and authority that clergy hold makes these crimes particularly shocking and deserving of serious consequences. The sentencing of Bishop Daniel is seen as a warning for would-be offenders that sexual crimes will not be tolerated, even for those in leadership positions. The expectation is that all institutions must work to ensure a safe environment for citizens. In Lagos for New Central, Ni Omani. To discuss this, I'm joined by Indidi Tawojo, legal practitioner and child and women rights activist. Thank you so much for your time, Tawojo. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, uh, what are the unique challenges that victims of sexual violence within religious institutions face when seeking justice? And your immediate reaction to, of course, the sentencing of the pastor? Well, I would say that um, this is um, a very um, wonderful judgment 
coming from um, the Lagos State Government, um, Lagos State Judiciary. It has been something that um, um, has been swept under the carpet, especially abuses by um, the clergy, people on the pulpit, what I call them, the pulpit rascality. They use this um, platform that they have, and instead of guiding and nurturing lives, they use it to destroy lives. They take advantage of um, young, unsuspecting um, um, congregants. And that has been a pain in the hearts of so many of us. This judgment is a judgment that will serve as a deterrent to other men of God who think that they can use the position of influence, use the position of power and authority, you know, to um, take advantage of people um, sexually. All right. Now, are, are there special responsibilities on religious institutions to address uh, these kind of issues? Yes. Um, I believe that this is a wake-up call to um, the religious institution, in, institutions because if you look at it, many corporate um, offices have gender desks now, and um, this is to facilitate and ease the um, reportage of sexual offenses by people who are in authority or even by colleagues. I think the church should take seriously the um, install a mechanism where people like who have been sexually abused, you know, or taken advantage of by um, members in the church, um, pastors can actually go forth and, you know, speak the truth. The truth of the matter is that the church and other religious institutions keep on sweeping these abuses under the rug, under the carpet. And this now has become a hydra-headed monster because when people do not believe that they are accountable, when they know that they won't be held accountable for crimes they have committed, what are we saying? Right. We are giving them the go-ahead to right. do and undo. All right. Uh, but uh, in the detail, Joe, thank you so much for your contribution. Legal practitioner, child and women rights activist. Once again, thank you. Thank you so much for having me. All right. We'll go on a quick break now. When we return, we have more stories. Stay with us. The presidential candidate of the People's Democratic Party in last year's elections, Atiku Abubakar, has demanded explanation from the federal government over an emergency loan of $3.3 billion by the NNPC Limited. Atiku, in a statement, expressed worry that since the loan was secured last year, the Tinubu led administration has handled the affair in secrecy. The deal is supposed to be a crude for cash loan arrangement by the African Export-Import Bank, which was said to be will cushion the harsh foreign exchange environment. According to the statement, a special purpose vehicle called the Project Gazelle Funding Limited is driving the deal, and it was incorporated in the Bahamas. The SPV is the borrower, while the NMPC is the sponsor, with an agreement to pay with crude oil to the SPV in order to liquidate the loan at an interest rate that is a little over 12%. To further discuss this, I'm now joined by Bolao Oloja, the development economist. Thank you so much for your time, Bolao. Yeah, thanks for having me. 
All right, now, do you think it's unusual that a state-owned oil company like the NNPC is borrowing money through an SPV incorporated in a country like the Bahamas? Well, um, what sort of structures can be brought up for, for borrowing? Uh, but if I were the government, I would have loved to avoid, um, you know, setting up structures in tax havens. Uh, particularly because of what those tax havens are notorious for. Um, there's no structure we want to put together that we cannot put together outside of those havens. So um, if I were running the show, I, I, won't, I won't use uh, a structure that is uh, in, in, the, in, in Panama or what, any of those tax havens. Now, uh, given that the deal is being conducted through, you know, an SPV incorporated in the Bahamas, how transparent and accountable is the process? Do you think it's a loophole to avoid scrutiny? Well, the reality is that um, I, don't, I don't have the details of the deal. Uh, even Alaji Atiku himself, as part of what he said, did not have the full details of, of the deal. So apparently, it is difficult to make any comment about what you don't know, um, mm. as, as it were. However, the problem with, you know, anything that touches on those islands, on those tax havens, is that they, they, there's, a, there's an edge of a stain that is associated with it. So people think, oh, what are you trying to hide? Why do you need all those sophisticated uh, legal structures that those tax havens are known for? So it, 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 it's, that, that's the only fear I see here. So people already see as, oh, is this an attempt to hide something? Um, and, and, and that is why it behoves on the government to say, no, 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 I'm not trying to hide anything. Here are the details of the deal. Mm. Um, and if we know the detail, we can, we can interpret the detail and say, oh, that's fine. And I believe it adds to the credibility to the... Uh, 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 transparency that the government can say, oh, I'm putting forward uh, in my procurement of law on the general financial management of the government. All right. Now, the emergency loan is supposed to help the NMPC meet its financial obligations. Now, why is the company uh, in such a dire financial state? And what do you think should be done to fix it? I, th I think part of what we need to move fast on um, is that privatization side of things. If this institution runs as a normal private institution, things are going to likely to be things are likely to be better. For as long as my almost since I will read and write, NMPC as an institution has been enmeshed in one problem or the other. Whether it is the $2.8 billion uh, or Naira in the days that fella sang about in 1978, or it is a Gulf windfall, or is it the subsidy, the management of the subsidy? Is it the swap issues? And several, there was a time that an MPC was literally living on borrowed form. So it, it, it has not lived up to the expectation of an institution um, of, of, uh, of the kind of importance that it represents in this nation. And one way we can help that situation, if, is, if we allow it to, to be commercialized, let it run like a private institution, uh, which is part of what the PIB or P PIA has provided. Uh, but as it's provided there, although the structures, the initial structures were set up, but as we speak, there is nothing that says that um, we have taken further steps to taking an NPC in the direction of being commercial, being run as a proper institutions set up to make profit, like, like other companies. All right, uh, Gola Day, thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. Great. Now, NC Continental Prime continues in East Africa, where the Kenyan government has vowed to challenge a court ruling against its decision to send a police contingent to Haiti to lead a United Nations-backed law and order mission in the gang-plagued Caribbean nation. Now, the ruling which branded the deployment illegal, throws into doubt the future of a multinational force long sought by Haiti's government, which has pleaded for international help to confront violence that has left nearly 5,000 dead.
The United Nations Security Council approved the mission in early October. However, concerns in Kenya over Nairobi's involvement prompted a court challenge. In the meantime, Kenya's Court of Appeal has declined to suspend an order that had blocked the government from implementing a controversial housing levy. The government had requested the court to allow it to continue deducting the monthly levy from salaried Kenyans pending the hearing of appeals challenging the levy's introduction. Last June, President William Ruto signed the Finance Act, a law that allows a legislation that is unpopular with many after introducing. In Southern Africa, Zimbabwe's main opposition and leader Nelson Chimisa will stay in politics and look to form a new political group. He made this known a day after he quit his own party, denouncing the government infiltration. Chamisa, who, is August, who in August lost an election he described as fraudulent to President Emerson Nagangwa, said he was ready for a new trust after leaving the Citizens Coalition for Change on Thursday. He decided to exit the coalition party he formed only two years ago to draw a line in the sand after it was hijacked by the ruling ZANU-PF party. We've seen a new infraction, the illegal recall of our members of parliament and even councillors, instigated by Mr. Mnangagwa, instigated by zanu -PF. Why so? Because they control parliament, they control the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, and of course other state institutions. Which institutions they are using to try and... Performers attending the Kalahari um, Arts and Heritage Festival have expressed great excitement in using the event to tell the world about the importance of the San culture and the African origins. The festival, an annual event in the Northern Cape province that celebrates the indigenous San communities of South African music, dance and arts. Now, to discuss this further, we are joined by New Central South African correspondent Bongani Sizaba and uh, Tuso Kumalo, a journalist. Thank you so much for your time. Good evening, Dapo, and good evening to our viewers. Uh, good evening. Bongani, great to have you. So, what's going on? You're looking good, Dapo, I must say. Oh, thank You're you so much. Good. So are you. Yes, uh, we are here at the Kalahari Desert. As you can hear uh, in my background, the groups here have started uh, the preparations for the big day for tomorrow, where the sons will be showcasing their cultural heritage, showcasing what they have. And we have more than 15 groups coming from Namibia, Botswana, and here in South Africa. And it will be music, drama, and a lot of cultural activities that will be happening here. And uh, just behind, on the other side, we have uh, a boom fire that will be happening. So it's quite an, uh, an evening with uh, a lot of events that will be happening here. And uh, we are so excited about what is happening today. And But we are also waiting for tomorrow, the big day for the sons uh, to explore and show us what they have, their cultural heritage. But uh, in the afternoon, we had an opportunity just to go around uh, the communities, just to get a feel of how the sun people are living and how uh, they, they, they are living. And uh, you know, for a long time, they, they have been wanting to be recognized. Uh, so we had an opportunity to go around uh, in the communities. I have my colleague here, Tuso Kumalo, just to give us uh, what he saw in the communities and how they are living in the communities. Uh, good evening, Tuso Kumalo. Just to tell us a brief, uh, as we were in the communities, what you observed about the Sun people. Quite interesting things that we saw in the communities, uh, especially that... Uh, this is a very dry area. This is a very hot area. So it gives you an indication that uh, uh, even this living standards of people here, uh, there's not much to do in terms of jobs, in terms of entertainment. And uh, this festival comes as a, a, a stopgap measure that gives these youngsters, as you can see behind us here, these are young people very active who are keen to tell the story of their culture, uh, who are keen to make the world know that they are here as sent people, 
as people who we consider as our as, as the originators of, of, of the black uh, people here in South Africa. So this is a place where beside these things that are coming here once a year, in most cases, they are not employed. They have nothing to do. But this evening and this weekend, having great time. Uh, we have seen uh, these dances. We, we don't see much of uh, the Khoi sons, especially in our culture. We don't see them mingling with other cultures here in South Africa. But this is one of the exciting events that we are going to cover. When you saw them dancing and when you saw those dance moves, something that we, we don't usually see. Your thoughts on that? Spectacular dances indeed, and very original and very traditional. Because what you have generally in South Africa, you have people doing uh, pop music, doing all these uh, modern, modern kind of dances. But these are down into dances, into, into, into traditions. If you look at most of their dances, they imitate animals, they imitate nature, they imitate the trees. And just to, to, to bring us back as Africans to our roots as Africans, before all this technology, before all this modern music was there, these were there, and they are trying to take us back to, to those roots, and showing us that as Africans, there is something that we have that we can be proud of without uh, involving the modern times and the modern music and dances. Uh, yes, uh, we have heard it there from my colleague Sokumalo. We have been around the communities. Uh, we spoke to people, and they are very excited about uh, tomorrow. And for our viewers, I'll be here just to give them everything that will be happening so they shouldn't be despair. And it's back to you in the studio, Dapo. All right, thank you so much, Bongani, and of course, uh, Thuso Kumalo. Ensure you have fun, and I would, of course, appreciate uh, a, a souvenir. Thank you so much. Don't despair. Everything you will get it tomorrow. I'll be live just to give uh, the, everything that will be happening to you. And good evening. All right. Thank you. And have a great night. Now, Russia's President Vladimir Putin has given the go-ahead for the construction of the new Leningrad nuclear icebreaker crucial to Moscow's Arctic ambitions. This comes as Russia seeks to make nothing what is an essential trade route to Asia. During a speech while standing in St. Petersburg as shipyard, Putin said the nuclear icebreaker will operate on the Northern Sea Route and participate in the most important Arctic exploration and research programs. Perpetual Fasami Peter has the day's business news. Business news in association with Money Master PSB, the easy way to master your money. In business. The Manufacturers Association of Nigeria, MAN, estimates that manufacturers spend 40% of their production costs on energy generation. According to the group, the lack of developed roads and railways connected to seaports impede business growth. The manufacturers also grapple with unreliable electricity supply, forcing businesses to rely on expensive diesel and petrol generators, resulting in high production costs. The inadequate power supply causes an annual economic loss of 10 trillion naira which is nearly 2% of the country's GDP. These challenges, highlighted by the Lagos Chamber of Commerce and Industry, LCCI, are expected to impact the sector's growth in the first quarter of 2024. To Southern Africa now, South Africa's largest coal export facility, Richards Bay Coal Terminal, experienced its lowest shipment volume in over three decades in 2023 due to disruptions in rail transportation. The facility CEO, Alan Waller, said that it shipped only 47.2 million tons of coal, the lowest amount recorded since at least 1992. 
ongoing challenges, including a shortage of locomotives, derailment, and crime, led to a sixth consecutive annual decline in shipment volume. Transnet, the state rail company, had aimed to deliver 60 million tons of the terminal, but fell short due to operational obstacles. In response, RBCT has set a budgeted rate of 50 million tons for exports this year, matching the amount of coal reaching the facility by rail. The decline in demand, especially from Europe, has led some smaller miners to consider halting production. India remained the main destination for South African coal, with 19.7 million tons shipped there from RBCT in 2023. And in East Africa, Kenya's Court of Appeal declined to extend a stay, permitting the government to collect a 1.5% levy for affordable housing, as a lower court had deemed the measure unconstitutional. The levy, part of a June finance law that increased taxes, faced opposition for exacerbating living costs. In November, the trial court ruled the levy unconstitutional, prompting violent protests. The stay, allowing collection, was in place until the government appealed. The appeals court denied an extension, citing the extinguished presumption of constitutional validity. The housing levy is part of the government's efforts to boost revenue and fund social programs amidst a looming eurobond repayment deadline. And finally, in North Africa, the Tunisian cabinet has approved a controversial bill allowing the central bank to finance the treasury, raising concerns about the bank's independence. President K said pushed for the law to be reviewed to enable direct financing of the budget through state bond purchases against warnings from bank governor Moru Anabasi. Critics argue that amending law suggests increased state intervention in monetary policies. Abasi previously warned that having a central bank buy treasury bonds could lead to high inflation. The bill is expected to be approved soon. The government's need for external loans is projected to rise to $5 billion in the 2024 budget with $3.2 billion from the central bank, according to economist Aram Belhaj. These are the business stories we're tracking at this hour. Thank you for watching. I am Perpetua Fasumi Peter. The news continues shortly. Bye for now. Business News in association with Money Master PSB, the easy way to master your money. Let's join the sports team for the latest in the world of sports. Sports Update. Brought to you. We go the extra mile. In the world of sport, Cameroon has been handed a double boost ahead of the round of 16 encounter against the Super Eagles, with the return of Vincent Abubakar and Clinton in J. The two arc rivals with eight Afghan titles meet on Saturday, January 27, renewing a decade long rivalry on the biggest stage. Nigeria heads into the clash after a comfortable group stage, winning two and drawing one of their three games. They score three goals with one of them coming in open play. Meanwhile, Cameroon were on the brink of elimination, but a comeback 3-2 win over the Gambia saw them reach the knockout round. Indomitable Lions forward Faris Mubagna is confident and he looks forward to the showdown. No, I don't think so. I think uh, he said it... Uh in a different way of where the, the people are understanding. But now it's, it's about uh, working as one, all together, the foreigners and uh, the foreign players who play in, uh, in, um, in Europe, who are not born in Cameroon, and uh, the ones born and raised in Cameroon. It's, uh, it's, it's the same blood, it's, still, it's one unit. And uh, don't misunderstand what he said. We, we don't take it the same way, so... Yeah, it's, it's just about uh, the Cameroon national team and we all defend it as one. Chelsea has secured the services of Levante striker Maria Ramirez for a British record fee. Levante will receive £450,000 for the Colombian forward with an additional £50,000 in potential add-ons. Ramirez, who has netted six goals in seven games this season, becomes the most expensive women's player in British history. Liverpool manager Jürgen Klopp has announced he's leaving Liverpool at the end of the season. The German tactician took to the Reds' reign in October 2015 as he was appointed as a successor to Brendan Rodgers. 
He has overseen Premier League, Champions League, FA Cup, Carabao Cup, UEFA Super Cup and FIFA Club World Cup trials during his time at the Merseyside. With the Reds now forced to look for a replacement, club confirmed he had told the club's bosses about his intention to stand down back in November last year. Former Liverpool midfield then current Bayern Leverkusen boss Xabi Alonso has been installed as the early frontrunner to replace Jurgen Klopp. Finally, in the world of sport, the 2024 Australian Open will see Yannick Sinner versus Daniel Medvedev final in the men's single on Sunday. Russian thought seed Medvedev on Friday completed an epic comeback against Germany's Alexander Zverev to be. Sports update brought to you by Cornoil. Cornoil, we go the extra mile. Sam Dandy has details in the world of entertainment. Entertainment news in association with Glow Unlimited. And now in entertainment or continental prime. In the shocking turn of events, police have successfully recovered a whooping 50 million naira stolen from Nollywood icon Mr. Ibu. Sources say that the money was stolen under mysterious circumstances, leading to a swift investigation by law enforcement. But that's not all. Authorities have charged Mr. Ibu's own son and his alleged lover in connection with the theft. Both are set to appear in court, facing charges related to the missing funds. The courtroom drama promises to unfold as the public awaits more details about this sensational case. Meanwhile, Mr. Ibu, the popular comedic actor, is yet to release an official statement regarding the incident. Fans are expressing their shock and concern on social media, sending their support to the beloved star. We have some fantastic news coming straight from the prestigious Keynes Film Festival. We celebrate a groundbreaking moment in the Nigerian music scene as our very own, the sensational Yemi Aladi, popularly known as Mama Africa, has just made history. That's right, the Johnny Hitmaker has become the first Nigerian artist to stamp her prints at the Keynes. This is an exceptional achievement, and fans are over the moon with pride for the Queen of Afro Pop. Known for her energetic performances, distinctive style, and empowering lyrics, Yemelade has undoubtedly become a force to be reckoned with in the global music scene. And now, she's etched her name in history by leaving her mark on the iconic Keynes Film Festival. This comes after her groundbreaking AFCON opening ceremony performance and her feature in the soundtrack of Jay-Z produced Hollywood film, The Book of Clarence. Finally, this one's exciting news. Ebony Life Films have just secured the cinematic rights to the much anticipated Bob Marley One Love biopic. The legendary reggae icon's life story is set to hit the big screen, and Ebony Life is bringing it to life. The film will delve into the extraordinary journey of Bob Marley, capturing the essence of his music, activism, and his enduring message of unity and love. The biopic promises to be a powerful celebration of Marley's impact on the world and his timeless contribution to music and culture. Get ready to experience the magic of one love in a whole new way. So mark your calendars to the movie goers and congratulations to Ebony Life. You can't separate the music and the message. Because every day we pay the price. Well, that's much you can take on entertainment. I'm Sam Dandy, back with the rest of the news. Entertainment news in association with Glow Unlimited. And that's a wrap on the news at this hour. But before we go, another look at some of our top stories. We told you that the World Court has said Israel must take steps to prevent acts of genocide in Gaza. South Africa described the ruling as decisive victory. Court has sentenced a popular Lagos pastor, Faye Daniels, to life imprisonment for rape. And finally, we told you that Kenyan government to challenge court ruling against Haiti's deployment. Don't forget to send in your eyewitness report to the WhatsApp number on the screen. You can also follow us on social media. We are at New Central TV. You can watch us live on DSTV channel 422. Star Times, Channel 274, Avo TV, and YouTube. Many thanks for watching. I am Dakwo. I did breathe.